All right, let's check. Are we live? Just want to make sure that I'm not talking and not live anywhere else. <laughs> All right, let's check. LinkedIn peeps, can you see me? If anyone can see me, please give a shout out so that I know I'm not talking to myself. LinkedIn, can you check, please? All right. How to commercialize your expertise into a profitable business. That is the topic of the hour. Hello, good day, greetings, ciao, namaste, and salam to peeps from all around the world. Welcome to the live. Now, this particular series is called Impact 2.0 Show. This show features purpose-led leaders who are making a meaningful impact through their work and touching and changing lives of many. Stick around till the end, and I promise you that you'll walk away with at least one, if not more practical, yet scrumptious takeaways from each of these live sessions, like an ice cream sundae topped with heavy whipped cream, melted dark chocolate, and a dash of gold dust. But most importantly, if you turn up live, you will get a chance to ask each guest questions that are bugging you like an itch that can't be scratched. Now, before I introduce you to my guest today, here is a quick preview of what's to come in the days to follow. So we have got, let's see, people, we have got Fulguni Katera on, coming on third, uh, December the 3rd on how to design the life you desire. And then a very own David Breyer on 9th of December on how to find your brand's untold story. Now, now, my today's guest needs no introduction, really. And if you're on LinkedIn, seriously, I don't know anybody who does not know her on LinkedIn. Like, seriously, nobody. She helps service-driven experts unpack and define their area of expertise into a personal brand so they can position themselves as an authority in their industry. She's the founder of Lights, Camera, Action Program and Authority 5 magazine. So will you please... Put your virtual hands together to welcome my fantabulous guest, Mary <laughs> Henderson. Oh, Amber, that's so such a beautiful welcome and an introduction. I know I feel like a rock star. Today has been my day. I've been on the front cover of magazine. I've been on TV, and now I'm with you. The best till last. Wow. <laughs> well, that deserves another air horn. Yeah. <laughs> That is super tastic. I need OMG. You. I OMG. Know. OMG. All righty. Okay. So, Mary, welcome to the Impact 2.0 show. Thank you for having me, Amber. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Now, before we get into the sausage and mash of the conversation, we are going to start off the show with a quick fire round. Are yeah. you ready, Mary? Absolutely. Bring it on, baby. All right. <laughs> let's go. If you could guest star in any TV show, what would it be and who would you play? Easy. Julia Roberts, Pretty Woman. I actually know it <laughs> off my heart. I know. I know. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm not apologizing. I love that show. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is every woman's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? 100% I wanted to be a singer. I still do. Oh, yes, I remember reading that about you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll, do, we'll, we'll find more about that later on in the show. Uh -huh. If you were an Olympic athlete, what would be your sport? Oh, my God. Well, none, but if I had to choose one, it would probably be gymnastics. Oh, no, actually, you know what? Now, can I change that? Yeah. I would be an ice skater. Ice skater, so, oh, that is cool. Winter Olympics. So that's actually, that's what I would do for sure, just purely because of the fashion. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Fashion and, and the dance, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> All righty. If you could read one book over and over for the rest of your life, what would it be? You know what? I, I thought about this and I could give you a, a, a lots of different books, but you know what, Amber? Yeah. I would love to reread the journals that I started to write when I was 10. Oh, Wow. I've got a box of journals. And you still write journals? You still every write? day. Every day. Every day. I have an entry every day. So you know what? And when I reread my journal like from four or five years ago, it blows me away. Actually, that's what I would read. Oh, wow. Over and over again. 
and do you think you're going to pass these journals on to your I don't to know. the next generation? Probably there's some really deep and meaningful stuff in there, but it's the truth, you know, and but it's just it throws me, it just throws me. So that's what I would reread again. Awesome, awesome. Lastly, what's the best advice you've ever been given? To listen more, speak less. Best advice I ever got. Absolutely. I'm sure majority of the people would agree with this. And hooray, we did it. <laughs> and I believe this deserves a wiggle and a dance. And you might have, you might have been familiar with the song. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it, Mary. We sure did, baby. <laughs> Come on, give it to me. <laughs> All righty. So let's get into the sausage and mash of this conversation. Okay, let's go. All right, Mary. Can you imagine I'm that I'm holding a pair of gloves? Could you take these boxing gloves and smash for me, and not my face, please, but some kind of personal branding myth, a bogus strategy, or a misconception and set the record straight once and for all? Okay, I'm going to start it from here because this really, really irritates me. It's probably my Achilles heel in that your personal brand is not your LinkedIn profile. Can we just... Set the record straight, please. Okay. It's done. It is not your LinkedIn profile. It's one moving part that you have to implement mm -hmm. after you've diagnosed, refined, defined what you are as a brand, what you look like, how you articulate, what it is that you do, who it is that you serve, what it is that you promise and all the other wonderful things that fall under personal branding. But LinkedIn is not your personal brand. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Do you actually get this question a lot, though? Like, oh my God. you know, is, is LinkedIn my brand? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Well, well, you know, I mean, you only have to go to LinkedIn to have a look at every second person who's a LinkedIn expert, you know, is also a personal branding expert because they all tell everyone you've got to get your LinkedIn profile up and running because yeah. that's your personal brand. Uh, no. No. <laughs> well, now you, you have heard this straight from Mary's mouth, okay? The same. The same. The same. <laughs> All righty. A side note here, we are streaming uh, live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. If for some reason your LinkedIn stream plays up, which often does, you can continue over at Facebook or YouTube. Um, I'll leave the link for the YouTube channel here, bit.ly forward slash spreading ideas with Amber Khan. All righty. Now let's get back into the conversation with Mary. <laughs> now, Mary, before we go any further, could you describe for our viewers and listeners what exactly is a personal brand and how does it differ from a business brand? Yeah. It, well, the thing is that with a personal brand and a corporate brand actually share the same attributes. So there's no difference from that standpoint. There's one critical difference when it comes personal branding, Amber. And the best way I can describe personal branding is that you, the human, are the business, okay? Mm -hmm. Period, full stop, but we don't have to actually make, a, you know, m give it any more meaning than that. It mm -hmm. is you, the business. However, in that lies a series of attributes no different to a corporate brand, okay? You look at a corporate brand, it has a story, it has values, you know, it has uh, a, um, an understanding of its uh, strengths, its proposition. It's got, it, it, you have to define the brand story, the brand essence, the brand uh, promise as a corporate brand, but you are doing exactly the same thing as a mm. personal brand as well. The mm. only difference, is, is that you're dealing with a human being mm. and humans are emotional, humans mm. have feelings, humans mm. have a heart mm. and as a personal brand our goal is to connect those elements so that we can actually connect with people mm. at, a, at a heart level yeah. and this is why when you're showing up on a platform like LinkedIn as mm. and wanting to um, grow your brand currency the most important thing to understand as a personal brand on social media is that selling is 
not going to work for that human being. It's mm. actually going to work against them because a human doesn't like to be spoken so, at or yeah. sold at. Yeah. You know, we need to connect at a heart-to-heart level. So yeah. in its core essence, that's what a personal brand is. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I think a lot of people, especially on social media, they make this mistake of, you know, that um, we're here, this is, this is, this is like a shop, you know, like this is our offline shop and yeah. we're here to sell our products and services. Hey, you know, this is what I've got. I'm so good at this. Um, and buy, buy, buy from me um, without actually realizing that it is a little different um, from, you know, from an offline shop. Uh, it is like you said. It's more about building human connection. It's well, that's relationship. Absolutely, and you know, and that then leads into creating a memory. You know, you've got to become memorable, and you know, and and leave some crumbs behind so that people can pick up those crumbs, get a taste of you, get a feeling of you know what it would it be like to live in her world or work with her, or you know, what 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 is her philosophy? What does she stand for? You mm. want to. Create that mystery around your brand because it's mm. what brings people back in. And mm. you know, and I think that this is really critical. And Amber, one thing that I always say to people, in fact, I had this conversation today, I had a podcast interview this morning, mm. and I was saying, you know, my goal on social media mm. or even if I'm in a face-to-face meeting, my ultimate goal is not the transaction. I don't care about the transaction Hmm. what i care about is that i give people a mary henderson brand experience Experience. that's Mm -hmm. what i'm interested in that's my ultimate goal Hmm. right Hmm. if i can't give somebody a mary henderson brand experience then well i mean how do I differentiate myself to everybody else? I don't. I'm just a part of the noise. So mm. I think a lot of people are frightened to do that. They're mm. so reactive and they want the transaction. I'm not after the transaction. I mm. have a lot of patience, you know, and so for me, leaving that taste in, in someone's mouth mm. as an experience is critical. Yeah, absolutely. So would you say that can anyone build a personal brand and is that the best way to differentiate and stand out from your competitors? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because if somebody came to me and they say, I want to build a brand, usually if somebody asks me that question, they usually want to get famous quick, okay? They're not the people that I want to work with. I have no interest in that because it's all false vanity and Mm -hmm. I interest in personal branding and I have a very strict criteria I have to work with people who have a specialization these are people that are you know have 10 20 30 40 50,000 hours in their uh, in their expertise or their their, their 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 specific area of expertise they're the people that I only work with amber uh, typically people that work with me are business owners they're you know they've got PhDs masters they're masters of their craft. That's who I want to work with because those people have got inventory. Now, let me just go. I want to just make sure that I clarify this because we all yeah. have knowledge, wisdom, and skills. There's no mm. doubt about that. Mm. And that's what I'm looking for. That's the inventory that I need to be able to turn someone, uh, turn someone's specialization into an authority. Um I, I'm not interested in working with people who want to get famous. That's not for me. I'll leave that to the Hollywood agents, not for me. <laughs> you know, yeah. For me, I'm working with super smart people who really want to dominate their niche. They have a solution to a problem. They know how to solve that problem and they just need help getting to that de- to their destination. Mm. So the, to answer your question, can anyone become a personal mm. brand? Of course, anyone can become a personal brand, but you've got to live by that brand because you've got to deliver on a promise. You Mm. know, you can't deliver smoke and mirrors. You can, and that only lasts for a a short period of time. Text perts are on their way out. They're not as, it's not a sustainable model. We're Mm. moving into a model in this new economy where corporations will be looking for a micro specialist. Mm. You know, 
people that come to me, they're looking for my specialization to solve their problem. They don't want Mary that's a little bit of a weight loss coach, a little bit of a mindset coach, a little mm. bit of, you know, a, a mindfulness coach. Oh, and she does personal branding and she does LinkedIn as well. I mean, what is that? So it being a little bit of everything is not going to serve you. And the people that are positioning themselves as a coach who are essentially based their um, credential on reading four or five books or doing a course and then suddenly they're a mindfulness coach or, you know, a finance coach, that's mm. not sustainable. So to me, that's not a brand. That's just mm. someone that's doing a job. A true brand, a true personal brand, their absolute driver without a shadow of a doubt mm. is they have a mission, they want to leave a legacy. That mm. is core driver and they're the people that I work with awesome so what I'm getting at is that to build a personal brand you have to deliver on your promise you have to deliver on the promise you've got to it has to be results driven outcome not deliverables in the form of um, word documents no one wants that they're not interested in that it's <laughs> got to be results driven <laughs> so okay so now uh, we've spoken about okay you know how who can build a personal brand now what are the key elements of commercializing an expertise if somebody with an expertise came to you to build how what are the key elements they need to look out for there's actually 24 macro moving parts that need to be refined defined and implemented you know along the way it's not something that you can go oh, i'll do this today and i'll do this in 12 months time these are these uh, moving parts all interlink. There's there must be congruency along the way, mm -hmm. and there's actually you know four critical parts. Um, the first part is actually defining the brand proposition, and there's a whole process around that. That's part one. Part two is the systemization of that mm -hmm. process of you know well what what is the what what, what is my specialization? So there's a whole optimization process okay. and then there's the digitalization process of well okay well what do, how do I now implement all of the moving parts so I can be seen I can be heard I can be found you know I can create a pipeline so there's automation behind all of that the digitalization part is yeah. a must you can't run a business without that yeah. and the third the fourth part is lead generation and in lead generation falls content strategy and the social selling strategy and the offline lead generation strategy mm. so these are four critical moving parts and within these four uh, critical moving parts there mm. are micro parts and mm. this is why a lot of people start coaching businesses and mm. you know where they start is basically where they keep in staying at. They're not moving forward because mm. most people are trying to convert their personal brand from the lead generation end mm. into a brand. If I get two sales, then I'll become a brand. Mm. Whereas that's the wrong place to start. You've got to start over here and mm. work the process. All right. So, so what you're saying is that a majority of the people get the sequence wrong. They, yes, well, I don't even know that there is a sequence actually. Okay, okay. So, all right, okay. So they're starting at lead generation, whereas you're saying that you have to focus on building your brand first before Correct. you go into digitizing or offline lead gen. Exactly, because, you know, like, you know, I, I produce a lot of free master classes and it was interesting that the one that I did where I was talking about, you know, um, how to build your pipeline on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. it was interesting. A lot of people came back and said, oh, this is exactly my model. And I said, well, that's awesome. But how many leads do you generate uh, per day? And they were yeah. like, well, none. And I said, well, that's not your model. Because yeah. if it was your model, you would be generating leads like I do on steroids every single yeah. day. So yeah. you're, that's not your model. So, yeah. so the, the point being, um, Amber, is yeah. that all of these moving parts are actually congruent. There has to be congruency all along the four pillars. Otherwise, there's a disconnect. Mm. So, so, and, and I think a lot of people don't understand the power of uh, the congruency and the consistency because mm. 
you know, they're saying one thing here, another thing there, but it has to it has to be congruent. There has to be consistency. Every time I'm interviewed, whether it be a podcast, whether it be a live show, you will see that my story is always the same. It doesn't change. It's always the same. Could you imagine me now talking about something completely left field? You know, people that are listening, even you, you know who you know who I am. You'd be like, "Where's she going with this? Like, this is not what I thought I was going to buy into." So mm. these four parts are interlinked, mm. interlinked. So okay, so I wanted to because a lot of people ask this question, and um, you know, when when they come to, I mean, I'm sure you've been asked this question many times as well when they're uh, starting or looking to build their uh, brand, is that they're in they're into few different things for example uh, maybe they uh, they advocate about things that they are passionate about maybe uh, you know female literacy but then they also they have an expertise in something else maybe they're a life coach or something so there are different things in life that they're passionate about how can they build a brand where they can um, talk about all of these things and still be known for their expertise that is uh you can't be, as I said before, a little bit of everything. However, you know, yeah. things that are um, fall under hobbies, things that fall under things that you stand for, um, you know, these are these are not necessarily things that transpire into commercialization. Mm. You know, the, the, if you have a hobby, there's a skill in that hobby. So that skill needs to be the focus, not the hobby, okay? Because most people are actually stuck at the hobby phase, by the way, so they never get to commercialization anyway. Mm -hmm. But the point being, let's just say you are a specialist in an area, but you have a hobby, um, you know, your passion is, I don't know, maybe you're a triathlete, you know, there's a skill set in that, in just that alone, you know, mm -hmm. which is about leadership, it's about teams. There's so much in that that can mm -hmm. be removed and, you know, and spoken about. So that yeah. forms part of the story, not necessarily the strategy, not necessarily about the offer, but you've got to be able to interlink aspects of, of who you are mm -hmm. in your natural state mm -hmm. in, in that got, that that is an overlay, if you will, mm. across your entire business, mm. um, you know, whether it be, as I said, uh, talking about your story, doing podcast interviews, or it's, a, it's actually your part of your offer. So mm. it's not one without the other, Amber. Okay. My positioning on personal branding is really simple. Mm. I just want to work with people in their natural state of being, which is why I've developed an entire algorithm for my personal branding uh, uh, system and methodology, because it's exactly what it does. It's mm. like it goes into a human being, it pulls out everything I need, and now I've got real life data to work with. If mm. I can't work with a human being in their natural state of being, because they're wanting to be, you know, Grant Cardone or Gary V or Oprah Winfrey, mm. um, from my standpoint, that's not an authentic human being. I can't work with that person because they don't want to be themselves. I need to work with people who want to be themselves. Like that's period. And, yeah. and believe me, how it's very difficult to get mm. people back in, into that into that space of yeah, but this is who you are. Like, why do mm. you want to be? You know, mm. great. I don't. You're not. You're not. Like that's too hard. Just mm. be you. And there's you've got a lot. You've got enough inventory in order for you to build a very compelling um, proposition in the marketplace. So, uh, what do you think? What would you tell people if they were if they wanted if they were confused and they wanted to figure out what was the natural state of being? You know, what? How could they go about doing that? They need to come and see me. That's what they need to do. <laughs> Well, that's for sure. Well, the thing is that this is the thing. It's actually not a um, a one size fits all. That's the you know, in in the work that I do, Amber, mm. um, when my clients get their the greatest epiphany when they're actually crossing over, they've they've unpacked their personal brand and they're now heading into the systemization um, part. It's that that's the crossover point where their whole life changes. And I mean, literally, their whole life changes. It's happened with every single one. And the reason for that is because the process that I've created is so finite, so detailed, there's no room for error. It's based on real life data that's coming from inside their heart. 
not textbooks, not what they want to be thinking on an Excel spreadsheet. This is real data coming from the heart. And so, and there's an, in, and, and there is a process of, like, it's actually full on. So, mm. um, and I've developed frameworks around this, this whole process. I think the starting point for most people mm. is to really understand, you know, what, what makes you happy? What mm. do you love? What can you do uh, with least amount of effort, with ease and grace. And I mm. think that that's got to be the starting point. How do you want to be perceived by the outside world? What do you look like? What do you want to look like in the outside world? How do you mm. want people to feel when they meet you, when they touch you, when they hear you, when they see you? These mm. are just fundamental basics that we have to actually get right. Mm. Mm. What What do they want to be known for? Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. You've got to understand what that looks like because when you are on social media, that's you're buying real estate based on what you want to be known for, mm. Mm. period. It's yeah. like you know, the reason why I get invited to so many, um, you know, uh, initiatives, podcasts, lives, front covers of magazines, TV, is because I've bought that piece of real estate. I own it. And by the way, Amber, I'm not interested in the 700 million people on LinkedIn. I don't care about that. I just care about my little micro tribe and that's all I'm serving. That little tribe returns massive dividends because mm. I'm so focused. I'm in my lane. I know who I want to start a conversation with. I know how to solve uh, pain points based on my lane and that's it. I don't want to be anyone else. It's really, really simple when you think like that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, well, since we are streaming on all social media channels, so I have to ask this question then, how important a part social media plays in building a personal brand, if at all? Um, um, now, I'm in two schools of thought here. Um, I uh, think that when people start out on social media, yeah. to get their confidence levels up, that actually can add value, believe it or not. Mm. From that standpoint I'm not against it okay what I don't like and where I think it's very very dangerous mm. is that a lot of these self-proclaimed influencers what they do is they have inflated um, vanity metrics they mm. look really famous but they're living on the poverty line and we right. have to actually understand this okay this is actually reality for most of these self-proclaimed influencers they believe that because they have four or five hundred followers that they're going to get all these gigs on stage and they're going to be look, seen as the expert the Gary V's of this world but the reality is Amber I'm not interested in a social media self-proclaimed influencer teaching me how to run my business who actually hasn't even can't even make a thousand dollars a month like mm. I'm not interested in that so the danger of these um pods is that mm. they they're not just in one pod they're in many mm. 10 20 pods they mm. have VAs that manage the pods mm. and all of those comments are mostly because of the the the, the pod engagement but mm. there's one more dangerous thing that happens and this for me is my a no-go no it's a massive danger zone and it's a no-go zone so for me, the danger is that I'm very clear on who I want to connect with on LinkedIn and who I don't want to connect with mm -hmm. on LinkedIn and Instagram and Instagram, okay? So I hand pick who I want to start a conversation with mm -hmm. because I know I can serve that person. When yeah. people send me a connection request, I have a look at their profile. I make sure that that person is the person that will find value in my content or mm. their network. Now, mm. when you're in a pod, it's everyone and anyone, okay? Mm. There are people in there that serve regions in the world that are of no value to me. Mm. There are people in the, in the pods that serve job seekers, no value to me. Mm. Um, you know, so so I'm looking at those things. That, for me, is critical. Mm. I'm not interested in being a, a little uh, um, on the platform across everyone's network and it's so diverse, it's of no value to me. And, yeah. and, and, and by the way, I get challenged on this all the time, but I stand by my ground and the reason for that, Amber, the mm. reason for that 
is that on LinkedIn, at the end of every day, I'm not looking at my posts and mm. asking myself, wow, how many likes did likes. I get? <laughs> I'm just yeah. asking myself, yeah. how many leads did that post generate for me today? Mm. Do you understand? Very big difference. Mm. Because if I'm not generating leads on a day to day basis, I don't have a pipeline. Now, mm. here's the difference between me and others, and I don't know how others operate, but my pipeline for 2021 is already established. I'm not freaking out about 2021 and looking for prospects and clients. My pipeline is very healthy. I'm in the nurturing phase in my pipeline at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying is that when I'm on LinkedIn, I'm not interested in being across everyone's network. I'm only interested in being in very specific networks. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I, and I think with uh, what you mentioned about uh, pods and stuff, it messes up um, the, the, your, the LinkedIn algorithm as well because it's going to send, you'll be seeing posts from people that who are not your audience. Um, mm. So it's going to totally mess it up. You're not going to totally. see the posts that you need to see or you want to see and the people you need to engage with. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, um, yeah, it's going to totally, totally mess up everything. And I've actually noticed in my own feed that um, even though, you know, my recent posts and stuff, people may say, you know, you I haven't had many likes, maybe 12, 15 or whatever, but it doesn't really matter because I have had in the past two weeks, I've had more leads come in. I've yeah. had more profile views, um, like pro probably the highest. I was looking at my 90 day graph, you know, on LinkedIn, and it's the highest it's ever been, right? Oh. And if, and if they look at my posts, they probably they're gonna think what 12, 15 likes, few comments. What what is that? Um, but that really doesn't matter for me. But yeah, you're absolutely right. It's true, it's true. And it, and, and and it just depends at mm -hmm. the end of the day what your purpose is on being on social media. That's mm -hmm. actually what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because, uh, like you said, it's the, the, the you know on LinkedIn. Well, on most of these platforms, but on LinkedIn especially, we're building these relationships, which yeah. you know, super, super. I mean, I've I've only been active uh, this year on LinkedIn, but yeah. in this short time, I have developed some amazing, amazing relationships. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with some so many great people who are doing great things, and you would want to be in that circle. Exactly. And I think that, you know, and my view is um, even on social, off, on and off social media is, you know, surround yourself with people that will get you closer to your goal, not further away from your goal. Mm -hmm. You know, I've disconnected from many of the self-proclaimed influencers. I've been abused because I've, you know, disconnected from them. But it just goes to show you the mindset, the desperation. I have no interest. Like what, how... What value am I going to bring to a network of desperate people who are vultures and hungry just for, for, for I don't know, inspiration, motivation? I don't need yeah. any of that. I'm not interested in that. You know, yeah. so, you know, and the other thing is, Amber, you know, I'm a pretty grounded person. You know, I'm very focused. I have a, you know, I wake up every morning. I write in my journal. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really committed to my well-being, you know, I'm write my task list, I'm committed with my clients, I'm all in. I'm busy, committed, and working hard every day. I haven't mm. got time to spend four hours in 20 pods engaging with posts that have a meaningless to me. I just yeah. don't interested. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I wanted to ask you actually, is is your traffic all organic or do you do paid advertising as well? All organic. All okay. organic. Awesome. All organic. Yeah. Wow. Um I'm testing some things at the moment on yeah. Facebook, which I'm all I'm doing is just boosting some of mm. my posts. I'm yeah. just doing some testing, but yeah. all organic amber, a hundred percent. My entire business in yeah. twenty 20 has been built on the back of uh linkedin literally yeah it seemed linkedin seems to be a, uh the biggest one for a majority of the people and a lot right. of people like i used to be on facebook like yourself you know right. and I, I and i regret why didn't i come on linkedin earlier but i remember late last year I, maybe i heard gary v saying that get on linkedin get on linkedin this yeah. is the time to get on linkedin yeah. 
Uh, and I'm glad I made that move uh, because the organic reach is really, really good on LinkedIn. It's really good. It really yeah. is. It's still very good. I still think that there's still room uh, to play in the organic space, at least for another, you know, year or two. Yeah. But you know, yeah. just, just got to, you got to, the key, the key is to build your currency on social media, but to get off social media and, mm. you know, a very healthy pipeline. That's my ultimate goal. Mm. Do you do offline events as well? Like, you know, pre-COVID, were you doing offline events? I was doing, I mean, it's not my my gig. I mean, you know, I'll do keynotes yeah. and things like that. And okay. I've run a couple of summits um, uh, this year, actually. And they did really, really well. But it's not my thing, uh, Amber. My mm. thing is that, um, you know, I create really high quality content. I give away free masterclasses every single week on LinkedIn, you know, and that serves me really, really well. And I would rather do that. Once you start getting involved in summits, you know, it, it, does, it doesn't necessarily pay or give you an ROI for all the effort. But mm. for me, I think that I've really got my content strategy, like really I've worked it out and it's really yeah. serving me. So let's quickly talk to, uh, talk about content strategy now that yeah. you've hit upon it. How important it is and what are the key elements when we're starting off uh, on, on that content strategy for a personal brand? This is where uh, I think that um, when people are starting out on any social media, yeah. you really need to have a content um, strategy in the, in the from the standpoint of actually even having a calendar of events. You know, mm. what a lot of people do is they wake up in the morning and they're like, what am I going to talk about? Mm. Oh, I need to do a post, but what am I going to talk about? That's reactive and it's meaningless. What <laughs> I like to do is I like to plan. I get all of my clients to do a 90-day content wheel, which mm. means that they have to pre-create 90 posts or when I say, sorry, 60 posts because they only do Monday to Friday. But mm. a, 90 days a three-month content wheel so mm. that when they wake up in the morning the actually if the post is ready the text the image or the video whatever it's ready to go they're not thinking and what that does is it creates a new habit so by the mm. 90th day they're already in the flow they already have created a habit at a cellular level that this yeah. is how you do it so then it becomes easier and easier then you don't have to pre-create all of your content you can do it on a day-by-day -day basis I still actually pre-create my content, but I now do a week ahead. The reason why I do that, I haven't got the time to wake up in the morning and go, oh, what am I going to talk about? Mm. I have to actually pre-create it. Mm. So, um, you know, and then it's easier to post it. I grab it. I, I'd say it takes five minutes in the morning. I'm done. But, you know, I think that would be my tip is to really create a calendar hmm. for 90 days and create a habit at a cellular level it makes your life so much easier yeah so i mean what what would you say in those 90 days what type of content to create should they only be just talking about the expertise or should they mix no, it up like well, you've got to mix it up exactly so the thing is the first thing i want to say is that a lot of people will talk about you know you've got to do video you've got to do video video is the big thing well, actually, I disagree with that. If my mm. client's natural state is not in front of video, do you think I'm actually going to make them look like a fool? Mm. Like, seriously, mm. I would never do that. That's It's not natural to them. Video for me, oh, my God, I'm in, the, I'm in my element, but it's mm. natural to me. But mm. give me a post that I have to actually write in, in the English grammar. It's not mm. me. I mm. write the way I speak. It's just simple as that. That's mm. not my strength. But put me in front of a video, I can articulate myself beautifully. It's almost like chalk and cheese for me. Mm. So the first thing is understand what your natural state looks like mm. and, and, and create content from that standpoint mm. and mix up the content. The content should not be, well, first of all, you should never be selling anything in your content. It really needs to be some a form of storytelling, you mm. know, and you've got to speak to people at people, you know, to cut, you've got to cut through the noise. You know, I see a lot of people blending in. It's the same old, same old. I mean, if I see one more leadership coach, I'm going to die. I don't know how many <laughs> more leadership coaches we can have. It's all the same old, same old. Or, or a LinkedIn coach. Or a LinkedIn coach. You know, like, hello, <laughs> so let's rise above the noise. Okay, well, you're yeah. a LinkedIn coach. But what is it that you specialize in? You yeah. know who does this really well, Amber? Yeah. My favorite, my 
favorite LinkedIn expert is Andy Foote. He is oh, yes. from De La Creme. And yes. he's the only guy that I would trust and go to for LinkedIn, honestly, because mm -hmm. he is a strategist. So he's got a he's a very different thinker. Yeah. Um, he's looking for metrics. So he's really strategic on how he uses LinkedIn. He's yeah. my go-to guy. Yeah, oh, yeah. So I'm in the process of bringing him on the in this live as well. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, so the way that he's positioned himself is not – I'm not a LinkedIn uh, coach. He's a strategic, you know, LinkedIn coach. I think he's just changed his title now again. But he's, but he's really, really zoning in. But it makes you stand out. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Who is this? Gianni. Oh, yes. Hey, Gianni. How are you? Uh, Gianni is saying, uh, good conversation. The content calendar should be tied to pillar content, research-based, but also you need to know your industry or clients. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. 100%. And that pillar content, like you said, could be in any form. If video is not your thing, maybe podcast is. Maybe if podcast isn't your thing, maybe blog series is. I mean, Amber, you know, this year in January, I started um, a, a content idea and I thought I'm going to do kind of like a magazine idea, you know, and then I just did like four pages. The week after it was like six pages and then it got to eight pages. You know, a year later, I have a full production, a magazine, which is nearly 100 pages that I had to go from weekly to now monthly because there's it's just full blown. So... Mm. Now I've built this magazine that is so congruent with what I do. I get to interview amazing people and that's brand building, you see. Yeah. I'm not even creating the content. I've got amazing content co contributors who are masters of their craft and they're helping me build my brand through that magazine whilst I'm helping them do uh, build theirs as well. So yeah. you see, this is just an idea that I came up with, but right. it's gone into full production, which now I'm at the point of now looking for sponsors. So you see, mm. what an idea can take you to a whole new tra uh, trajectory. Yeah. And it takes time, like you said, right? It's not going to happen yes. like that, not from day one. Yeah. It takes no, momentum. No momentum. And you do hit the momentum. You get to about the fourth uh, month mark. You kind of see things moving, happening. You get to six months, more things happen. Then you get to a year and it's like the, it just changes. But the key to success for anyone on any social media platform is patience. Patience mm -hmm. is my secret weapon. I'd say that to everybody. And people don't want that. They want it now, 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 now. They yeah. don't want to do the work. Listen, I've been 15 years in the making. I've been an entrepreneur for, since 2005. I've only worked for myself since 2005. It's honestly, I was saying to my husband the other night, it's taken me 15 years to get me to this place where yeah. I'm like, I'm in the zone, like I'm flying. Yeah. So yeah. it just takes time. Yeah, it do, it does. It does. I know my husband makes fun of me. He often he often says to me, he actually looks at his watch. He's like, um, how long did it actually take you to get here? Uh, like 20 years? <laughs> That's right, Amber. But he's right. He's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Who is this? Uh, is it Jenny again? Jenny's asking, not sure, uh, Mary, if you can answer this, uh, about account-based marketing and content calendars to drive up quality of leads. Um, not really <laughs> Mary's area ex of expertise, um, but... Yeah. Uh, I'm not, I, 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 so just to answer that question, yeah. my lead generation strategy yeah. is very strategic and deliberate to the work that I do. And it is an inbound and outbound component, but it's really exclusive. And when I say me, I'm saying my lead generation works for me and then the lead generation strategy that my clients create works for them, right? But yeah. but there is, a, there is a framework that I've created and follow, which is pretty amazing. And, you know, it's 100% results driven. So that's just, I know I haven't answered your question, but yeah. it's kind of, I'm yeah. answering it from another yeah. angle. Yeah. So it's 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 a different pipeline for everybody uh, yeah. for each one of your clients. Yeah. 
All right, Mary, as you know, this particular series we're delivering is called Impact 2.0. Could you share with our viewers and listeners maybe a story or a moment or an encounter that had a profound impact and changed the course of your life? I want to say that in life what I've learned is um, that every single human being has a genius zone. We actually yeah. do. And we have mission. I don't like to use the word purpose for the simple reason that I do believe our everyone's purpose in life is to actually find that mission and also understand who they are at their core in their natural state. To me, that's the universal purpose. Our mission is once we've understood that is to then pursue that mission in the form of a vocation. In 2011, when my second son was born, three hours after his uh, birth, I had the greatest epiphany of my life because I, I, was, I reached out to get on my lip balm, my business card fell out, I had a software company at that time, and I was looking at my card, Amber, mm. and I my business card fell out and I was looking at my business card and it's had my title, you know, a managing director of my company. And I just thought in that moment, oh, my God, my whole life has been a series of labels. Like, really? You know, daughter, mother, sister, friend, boss, yeah. I, you know, ridiculous. Anyway, so um, I knew in that moment that I was going to resign from my own company. I just had enough. I realised that I, I created that uh, software company really to please my parents. I just wanted the tap on the shoulder. I wanted my parents to say, we're so proud of you, even though you didn't finish your degree. Okay, that was a big, big thing over my shoulders. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I ended up um, merging my business with another company. And in 2012, I was completely free. First time in my life, I've never worked, mm -hmm. but I had two little babies. And I had a mentor who was a uh, professor in philosophy from Oxford University, mm. and um, he mentored me for an entire year. And um, it was in that year where I actually found what I'm meant to be doing for the rest of my life, which is what I'm doing right now. Yeah, and it sure. was in that year where I unpacked my genius zone. Mm. And what I found, and this is the message I want to leave behind, what mm. I found was I thought, I, I started my relationship with personal branding in two, year 2000. I've been at personal branding for 20 years. I thought that everyone did that. I right. thought that everyone understood how to create digital assets. I thought everyone understood how to sell the way I did. That created incredible results. But what I realised when I was working with Mark is, hang on a minute, I've actually seriously got a genius zone here that other people don't actually understand. They think I'm weird. I'm sick and tired of people saying, oh, Mary's like five, ten years ahead of her time. I'm like, why are people saying that? What? Yeah. I'm not ahead of my time. I'm here. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, and then I unpacked it and um, I started to see your passions and then I started to realise, oh, my God, like, wow, 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 I've got, I think I've got a, a, a solution to a really big problem. Mm. And then from there it took me three years to develop the frameworks, which is now my system. Mm. And it took me three years before I started my coaching business when I transitioned full-time to a coach, which was 2015. Um, but that was, for me, a, a real eye-opener, which is why I'm so incredibly passionate when I work with people that mm. I'm must understand who they are in their natural state because mm. I understand the power of that. Absolutely. And, and because you've been on that journey. Yes. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Hardcore. But Hardcore. it was you know, it was the greatest gift I gave to myself. That's that's the greatest thing that I could have done yeah. because what it does, Amber, it um it creates a high level of consciousness. You start to challenge your own paradigms, you start to challenge your thought processes, all yeah. the things you were taught as a kid suddenly have zero meaning because you see yeah. the world through a different lens. Yeah. And, uh, and one thing about me is that I see the world with complete a completely different lens. And yeah. so um, I'm grateful for that. I really am grateful because it's made me a much better person and, you know, a really different type of a mother in, the, in, in terms of the way I'm raising my kids to be highly yeah. conscious, yeah. Yeah. Do you think uh, over the years, uh, um, as you build your personal brand, you grow personally as well? 
Oh my uh, God. Are you kidding? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank God. I mean, <laughs> because I think that's really important. I think that evolving and changing, just like the weather, like nature, like we all we all change. We get mm. older, we get wiser, you know, we make better choices, we mm. know the difference between good and bad and who we let in and who we let out. And the other thing is, Amber, you know, if for me, it's really easy to say no. Like mm. this is what I've learned. I've arrived at a point in my life where it's easy for me to say, no, I'm not the right person to work with or no, mm. I don't want you in my my life. Like that you're just not, I, I can't serve you. As you mm. we're not it's not gonna work. I mm. have I've I've established, you know, that understanding of mm. my circle of influence, what that looks like how I want it to look, why it's important to me and, um, you know, and and that that reciprocation that's required, you mm. know, in life to get ahead is fundamental. It's like you've got to give but you've got to get back. You've got to keep filling the cup. So as you're giving out, you've got to keep, you know, getting in. And I think yeah. a lot of people don't understand the concept of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think until you've arrived at that stage, I guess, or until I guess you you know yourself, like like you said, your ge your zone of genius, yeah. you it's hard for you to say no. It's hard for you to know what you you know what you stand for and uh, yeah. and what you stand against, basically. T totally, absolutely, hundred percent. So, and I think that you know, and 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 for me, that's really important. You know, there are things yeah. that my, my values. You know, my, I really stand by my values. I eat, breathe, sleep them. I stand by them. Mm. There's absolutely no doubt about that. It's obvious. You know, I'm a truth seeker. I speak the truth. I give information out. That's that I want. To, I want to lead people down the truth path, not the get rich quick or get famous path. That's the part I just loathe. And so, you know, it's it's obvious in the way that mm. I now it's just all about you i'm just going to give it to you the way it is you know yeah yeah but so i think you your values and lead with your values i think that's fundamental hmm. absolutely all right now folks remember that you can access the bite-sized takeaways of these conversations on my youtube channel here you can go to bit.ly forward slash spreading ideas with amp khan and let's see all righty now, and oh, of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when the next video is um, available for you. Now, those of you who joined this conversation late, here is a sneak preview of what's to come on the show in the coming days. We've got Felguni Katira on how to design the life you desire on the 3rd of December. And then we have everyone's favorite, David Breyer, talking about how to find your brand's untold story on December the 9th. All righty. It is now that time of the interview for us. And you may be thinking, what is it? Gossip time or share the fun pickup lines time or tell an embarrassing joke time. Unfortunately, we are not that type of a show. Not yet anyway. But what it is time for is... <laughs> The 48 hour challenge time. Ooh. Mary, this is where I ask you to share what is that one thing that our viewers and listeners can implement in the next 48 hours that doesn't cost an arm and a leg or requires a large team to execute it? Okay. I want people to message me and share with me what they do in under five words. Aha, uh -huh. that is a brilliant challenge. What they do in under five minutes. And five words. Oh, five, five words. words. Oh, wow. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Five words. You need to be able to articulate what you do in under five words. Now that's a great challenge. That is a great challenge. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> take you up on that as well. That that is an uh, easy, easy one to implement, hopefully. <laughs> or not. We'll what see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes the easiest things are the most difficult ones for people. Yeah. Actually, that's a good exercise to find out where you are, what what do you stand for, you know, your values and what kind of results are you producing for your audience? So it it's going to make them <laughs> really think, really ponder Absolutely. over that. Absolutely, Amber. All righty. Now, Mary, where can our fantabulous viewers and listeners 
find you or follow your content? Well, LinkedIn, of course, at Mary Henderson Coaching. Just look for the photo of me with a pink circle around my face <laughs> or my website, which is maryhendersoncoaching.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All righty, peeps. I know it's very late for um, Mary over there. I think it's past midnight for you, isn't it? It's just it's just, it's just nearing on midnight. It's 11.54 p.m. Oh, my God. Well, I'm really grateful, Mary, that you took the time out for all of us and, yes. and join us even that late in the evening. No, no, it's like I actually I had my group coaching call, which usually finishes at 10.30, which is why I chose tonight because I knew I'd just still be out. Oh, you'd be up late. Good decision. Good That's decision. It. Good decision. Exactly. All right. For all those watching us live today, I really heart you. I really do because these lives wouldn't be fun without your support. Thank you, Mary, for joining me and sharing your genius and your fabulous self with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. Toodaloo for now. <laughs>